On my 11th circle presents Crick Buzz Live. We are looking at a team this time for whom I have nothing but admiration. From where they were to where they are remains one of the great stories of world cricket. Not just in the last 10 years, but I dare say over the last 50 years. It's just incredible where Afghanistan have reached. And what I like about Afghanistan even more is that every time you look at them, they're, they're getting better and better. It's not that uh, they had a core group of people that brought them up to a point and then they suddenly stagnated at higher levels, as can happen with teams that break through and suddenly don't know where, where, where to go next. But Afghanistan are looking better and better every time they go. And that's what I've enjoyed watching about them. I mean, I, I saw them at the Asia Cup. That wasn't that, that long ago. Yes, they lost to Pakistan. They tied again against India, they beat Bangladesh, they beat Sri Lanka and they were, a, they were I, I just love the spirit with which, uh, with which they were playing. Why do I think that uh, Afghanistan have got a fair bit going for them? For a start, they've, uh, they've moved themselves completely clear of the other teams who are in their range. We're, lo we're talking at uh, the Netherlands, Scotland, Ireland. I know they, gi they give themselves a huge scare in the qualification for the World Cup, but I don't think there's anybody in world cricket who says Afghanistan should not be here. Now, having got here, can Afghanistan create an impact? I think if they can finish seven or eight, then Afghanistan can be mighty happy of uh, what they have. But there's a reason I'm saying that Afghanistan are looking better. I think they've got an explosive uh, pair of openers. Mohammad Shahzad, sometimes you look at him and you focus too much on his build. He's a quality batsman. He, he gets big scores, but now he's accompanied by Hazratullah Zazai. You might say that 160 he got was against Ireland. Nah, there's some, there's some clean hitting there. He's followed that up with lots of other cameos and they've got a good opening pair. It helps that the opening pair is as explosive because they've got some quality batsmen to follow who've got decent averages but whose strike rate isn't, isn't probably where it could be. Ramachai is the key for them because he comes in at three and he brings stability to them. So then they've got Ramachai, Asghar Stanikzai. I know they call him Asghar Afghan but you know what, Asghar Stanikzai is such a lovely ring to it, doesn't it? But I guess if he's changed it, we'll call him that. So they've got Ramachai, Asghar Afghan, Hashmatullah Shahidi. Again, a very, very good work of the ball and Muhammad Nabi at six. So if they want a bit of stability in three, four, five, they've got the batting to be able to do that. It's when, when teams come up from, from lower ranks to playing at the highest level, sometimes the batting struggles. And that's why I think three, four, five is such a good core for them. That stability then allows them to use players like Muhammad Nabi, Gulbadi Naib, if they can accommodate Najib, he's a, he's a very good finisher and Rashid in that lower middle order. But the batting just seems to fall away a little bit after that. I know Dawla Zadran can swing his bat a little bit. But that takes you into the slightly weaker arm of Afghanistan cricket, which is the seam bowling. You look at Afghanistan cricket and the first names that come to mind, especially because there have been such big names on the T20 circuit, are Rashid Khan and Mohammad Nabi, both quality spinners. You can bank on them giving you 10 overs every day. And then Mujib, who was with this wonderful concoction, can give you 7, 8, maybe 10 most days. But that's three spinners. Where are the seam bowlers coming from? Gulbadin Naive will give you five, six overs. I'm not sure. Is a 10 over bank there in any case? And then they've gone back to an outstanding bowler in Hamid Hassan. But it's four years since he made that impact at the 2015 World Cup. Hamid Hassan, Shapur Zadran was such a good opening combination. I don't know if he has a zip left in him because he was a quality player just before all those injuries uh, uh, in injuries laid him low. And then there's Dawlad Zadran, Aftab Alam. They've got, a, they've got an okay -ish seam bowling core there. But I think seam bowling might well be the slight weakness for Afghanistan going ahead. I get the feeling they will rely enormously on Rashid and Nabi. But Rashid is someone who's got used to carrying the burden in 20 overs cricket everywhere he goes. He's been in good form in the warm-up games as well. So he'll, he'll have to take his performance to another level. Afghanistan is Rashid Khan, but he's, he's such a fantastic story. There's just one other thing I wish Afghanistan hadn't done. There's no slight on Gulbadin Naib as captain. But under Azhar's Afghan, they had a very solid well, a, a captain around whom that team was built. And it's interesting that they made the change, but the new captain says, I still look upon the old captain as my leader. I only hope that doesn't create a bit of instability in the ranks because I'm not sure it was a very popular decision. And so they've put a little bit of burden on someone who's really a bits and pieces player uh, in, in Gulbadin Naib. How far can Afghanistan go? 
If they win a couple of games, uh, it'll, it'll be great fun. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, if I was Afghanistan, I'd say, let's try and finish 6-7. If we can finish 6, that's fantastic. If we can finish 7, that's great. If they can finish 8, that, that, that's all right. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a team you want to watch at the World Cup.